Gospel of August the 31st, 2016, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. After Jesus left the synagogue, he entered the house of Simon. Simon's mother-in-law was afflicted with a severe fever, and they interceded with him about her. He stood over her, rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up immediately and waited on them. At sunset, all who had people sick with various, with various diseases brought them to him. He laid his hands on each of them and cured them. And demons also came out from many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and did not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus left and went to a deserted place. The crowds went looking for him, and when they came to him, they tried to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, To the other towns also I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. Because, of this, for this, because for this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us, let us try to dwell deeply in this beautiful gospel. There are many um, acts that we must imitate from our Lord Jesus. The first one is that he leaves the synagogue because he was teaching in the synagogue. As it is again repeated at the end of the Gospel, when it says that he went away preaching in the synagogues of Judea. So we have a teacher who wants to teach us. And what is the teaching? The kingdom of God, the mercy of God, the love of God, his compassion for us, his forgiveness for us. Now teaching uh, relates particularly to the ordained ministers, especially the ones of us who have been granted the immeasurable gift of attending the full years of the seminary in preparation. Those many years in the seminary that prepared us were not for our own benefit. They were the preparation for us to prepare the food for all our brothers in the world. So we should strive to feed everyone with the best of what we have. But it does not stop only in the ordained ministers. It also goes on with every baptized person. And then with them and with us, with all of us children of God, it is not only our words, but it's our deeds. The preaching with our deeds, with our lives, the testimony of our lives, the coherence of what we be, what we do and, and what we say. That is the best preaching at all. We must strive to live that way. That's one thing. The other one is this. We see how the Jesus entered into this house of Peter, of Saint Peter, the first Pope. And they presented him the mother of law of Saint Pope. Of, of, of this Pope, of the first Pope. And let us remember that many of the first Popes were married. There is another teaching. Many of us ordained ministers do not like to dwell on the matter. But I believe that there is a very deep teaching which we must recuperate sometime in the future to go back to the pristine ways of the Lord lest we might lack some humbleness and think that we can correct the way that God did His church. That is another story. The mother-in-law of Peter, Saint Peter, the first Pope, had fever. And the Lord Jesus took away the fever by His word. And what did this woman do afterwards? Why? She waited on him. She started serving him. A heart that has felt the mercy of God will immediately love him, would immediately like to do something for him. And that is the very way that we should try to do also when we are the recipients of the love of God, to work for him. So God, the Lord Jesus, wants us to be well, 
He wants us to work in the wellness of our brothers. Next is that there can be no demon before him. Every time he laid his hands on any person, he cured them and he drove out any demons. Did that only happen back then? Or should we all, especially ordained ministers, drive out demons with the power of God today? I believe that we should. I believe, I believe truly that we should not be afraid, that it is wor the work of God Himself in Jesus Christ through ourselves who have been ordained to serve Him and our brothers. The next thing is that he spent the time praying. It says, at daybreak, Jesus left to go to a deserted place. If there could be anyone in the entire human race who would be in communion with the Father was his Son. The Son was in absolute communion with the Father. One could argue that he did not need to pray and yet he is the first one in prayer. He is the first one to give us testimony how, ne how useful, how needed is to pray all the time. And finally, when they try to retain him, he says, I must go to the other places, to the other villages, to the other towns. We have not to engaged forever in one community, especially we ordained ministers. When we arrive at a, at a certain community by the grace of God, we receive so many gestures of love that we start deeply loving that community, the persons in that community. And when our bishops sent us somewhere else, it is hard for us to leave them, but we should not leave them behind. We should carry them in our hearts and go with speed and diligence and love to perform the work that has been assigned to us everywhere, everywhere, and carry everyone that we have met so that our prayer might be fuller, richer, with love for all those who have loved us, for all those who remember us. Dear brothers, there are so many things that we should do. I do beg you, please, please pray for us ordained ministers, especially for the bishops who have so many troubles, and for the priests, but don't forget us deacons. And let us pray for each other that we might truly be children of God and imitate the Christ step by step. Not only we ordain ministers, but all the baptized throughout the world. Until we meet in heaven. God bless you all, brothers.